Yeah. Sure, let me take a note. Um, where's my phone? Oh. Duh. How annoying is it when you can't find what you're looking for? Well, no more. Hey, Vlad here from DevInsideYou.com. Welcome to another video. Today we're talking about GitHub's code search. It's essentially a search engine for code that I'll tell you all about right after the message from our sponsors, which is you or people like you. We're currently on the road to 500 patrons, which collectively help me pay for an editor. Instead of editing videos, I prefer to spend my time answering your questions on Discord or hang out with you during live streams. Save 7% on an annual subscription and thank you to everyone who already does so, especially Fred Albu and Johan, who are currently my highest tier patrons. Thank you. Back to the video. I'll be honest with you, I didn't really want to make this one. Story time. A while ago, I stumbled on a product, also a company called Sourcegraph, which is a code search engine. It has IDE extensions, a CLI, gorgeous documentation, a generous free tier, and obviously a website with a search form on it. You can search for repos, paths, symbols, you can go to definition, you can jump around, etc, etc. Developers spend a good chunk of time searching for code, and Sourcegraph is supposed to help with that. In fact, allegedly, it's a life-altering experience. Now it's true that occasionally you stumble on an itch that you didn't know needed to be scratched, but this wasn't the case for me when I learned about Sourcegraph. Generally speaking, I don't have any issues finding the code that I'm looking for, so I wasn't too excited about Sourcegraph. And so I added it to one of my never-ending to-do lists to check out and eventually make videos about, but then life came in between and so it's been on that list for like half a year or so. And then this happened. GitHub released essentially the same thing. They call it Code Search, which explains the CS subdomain. It's currently in the closed beta. I got accepted after about a day or so, and I'm sure that you don't require any special status. Just apply and you'll get access. Long story short, my hand was forced. Now I had to check it out. And I did, live here on YouTube. In fact, the gods of algorithms blessed me and source grab dev showed up. Unfortunately, I didn't have much time to stream that day, and so my exploration of both of those tools got interrupted. So here's the TLDR. Sourcegraph is a more mature offering that I might or might not eventually play around with in the future and make a proper video about. GitHub's code search is still in beta, so you don't get any fancy IDE extensions or a CLI, but I'm sure they're coming in the future. I don't work for GitHub though, so it's just a speculation, but come on. It's coming for sure. All right, so essentially what you get is code search, well, duh, and code navigation, depending on whether your language is already supported or not. You can search either the entire GitHub or you can narrow down the scope to your organizations or repos, or you can even create a custom scope. Now, even though it can solve fizzbuzz problems for you, that's not really what it's for. If you're interested in a tool like that, you might wanna check out GitHub's Copilot. I already made a video about it. Anyway, the search access, aka the term qualifiers are pretty straightforward. You can narrow down the results by the path of the names of the file, its content, its programming language or similar things like protobufs or markdown, the symbol, and also it has a weird thing called is, which currently allows you to only filter out the archive repositories. Let's not forget that the regexes or regexes, whichever you prefer, and globe patterns are supported as well. As of right now, it's pretty small and as such, it's pretty easy to learn. In the form field, you just click on that question mark on the right and it gives you a single page with the entire syntax. It took us like 20 minutes to go through the whole thing during my live stream. Most of it is self-explanatory if you've been around the blog for more than five minutes. It's key colon value pairs separated by spaces. There are three Boolean operators and I'm sure you can guess which ones. They need to be spelled in caps though for some reason. And is the default and the precedence issues are solved by parents. Who would have thought? The special characters, like the semicolon for instance, are escaped with backslashes or you can spell the entire thing with quotes. Regexes are surrounded by front slashes as they should and if you're outside of quotes, you can even use globe patterns. For now, only the asterisk or the star, however you want to pronounce it, and the question mark are supported. You get some auto-completion if you give it a second and you can jump to definition if your language is supported. One neat trick that you can do is, after you've found what you've been looking for, you're presented with some code viewer and then you can highlight a piece of text and then on the right a search button will appear that will allow you to search for that thing that you highlighted. Kinda neat. 
you can do some code navigation with that. As I already mentioned, it's still in beta, and so all the features that I described are pretty limited as of right now. And even though I don't see it changing my life anytime soon, I can imagine using it from time to time. For instance, it shines when you're searching for docs by narrowing down the language to Markdown. It's also pretty good at searching for error or log messages because you can find exactly the place where the error came from. It's nice to have a place for search that's better than Google because it's designed specifically for code. Oh, and how could I have forgotten? It's written in Rust, so it's blazing fast! Now, this is mostly a Scala channel, and if you're not aware, Scala permits more than just alphanumeric symbols. And so, one of the things that I tried was to search for purely symbolic operators. And I'm glad to report that with some patience and decent double coding, I found what I was looking for. And there you go. This was my first look at GitHub's code search. What do you think? Are you gonna use it? Let me know in the comments. If you stuck around until now, thank you for hitting the like button and I hope that you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna see you in the next one and for now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsideu.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and if you wish to support tech education, consider doing so on GitHub sponsors or Patreon, whichever you prefer, and that's watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.